David Smith here with yet one more Flip Classroom Math lesson. Three tips before we start. First, you can adjust the playback speed faster or slower to suit your desire. Second, you can pause the video at any point to jot down questions or catch up with your notes. Third, you can turn on the captions so you can read my words on the screen. Today's topic, the tangent line problem. Now this is a limits-based treatment of finding the slope of a tangent line. And as you recall, our last unit, we spent quite a bit of time looking at slopes of tangent lines, which we also remember are the instantaneous rate of change at a point, which is also the derivative at that point. So we're going to approach this this time from a limit perspective, but we're going to get back into derivatives towards the end of this unit. So let's get started. So what I've done, actually, let's take a look at this graph first. Here's the simplified version of what we're looking for. We've got some increasing function, probably exponential, and we have a point B, and we want to find the slope of the line tangent at B. So this is essentially what we're trying to do here. Now let's take a look and tease out the details. Remember, slope is the rate of change um, on a function, and it's the difference in the rise, which is y2 minus y1 for two points, and over the difference in the run, which is x2 minus x1. So all we need to do is jump on our graph and figure out what our, what, our, uh, what our coordinate points are, and then we can calculate the slope of this particular secant line. So let's take a look at that. To find the rate of change at B, to find the slope of the tangent line at B, what we do is we take a secant line and we move our A point closer and closer and closer to B until we're calculating the slope of a very, very short little secant line that will eventually approximate the slope of the tangent line at B. So I've teased this out quite a bit. This slope is not going to be really close to the slope of the tangent at B, but it, the diagram helps us see all the moving parts so we can create our formula. All right, so to do this, we need our x1, y1, x2, y2 so we can plug it into the slope formula. So point A, we're going to pick some value for x. We don't know what that is, but it's x. We put it into the function, and it spits out f of x. So point A can be written just as f, or as x, and f of x. So that would be x1, y1. Okay? So that's going to be two of our, or one of our coordinate points that we need for our slope formula. Now what we do to get to B is we move some distance along the horizontal axis, I'm calling that h, and now our new x coordinate is just going to be x plus h. So I've written that here. Here's the x coordinate of point B, it's x plus h. And then we take x plus h, we stick it into the function, and it spits out the y coordinate, or what we commonly call f of x plus h. So that's our second point. That's our x2, y2. Okay? So now we're set to write a formula for the slope of this secant AB. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write m of secant AB is going to equal y2 minus y1, so it's going to be f of x plus h minus f of x. So that's the change in y, that's the rise, and we can denote that here on the graph. That's We started here at f of x. I'm sorry, we did start there, but we have to subtract where we started from where we wound up. So here's where we wound up, which is f of x plus h minus f of x. So that's this distance. That's the change in y, or the rise. So we've got that on the top of our function. Now, on the bottom of our function, what we have is um, x plus h minus x, right? We, we subtract where we started from where we ended up, and x plus h minus x is just h. So that's the slope formula for finding the secant of a, b. And for any combination of x's and h's, and f of x's, and f of x plus h's, we can find the slope of our secant line. So that's the fundamental formula for getting a, a secant line, slope. Now what I want you to do is pause the video and think about what you know about limits. And think about what you know about what we have to do to get to the tangent line slope. Because remember, this AB, it's not close to the slope of the tangent at B, because our A is pretty far away from our B. In our last unit, what we did is we, we moved our A really close to B and calculated the slope for a really, really short secant line, and that let us see what the slope of the tangent line would be. 
So if you use that process and the concept of limits, you can write this, this slope as a limit. So I want you to pause the video and give that a shot. And take a minute or two. Pull out your pencil and draw some things. Ah, that's not right. Scratch that out. Try something else. Talk to somebody else. See what you can come up with. This is a really good chance to practice some critical thinking. Okay, let's see how you did. The idea here is that what's happening to H as we get closer and closer to B? It's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. At B, there is no H, okay? So what's happening is we're taking the limit as H approaches zero. Okay, so as H gets closer and closer to zero, we're taking the limit of this uh, function here. So this is of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. And that equals the, the slope of tangent a, b. Okay? So what we've done now is we've tied the work we did in our last unit into this new unit of limits. So one more time to summarize in case you're still kind of trying to get your brain around this. We have our point A, X, and F of X. Then we move H over on the horizontal axis. So now our new X coordinate for this point is X plus H because we've moved that distance over. And then our new Y coordinate there for that is F of X plus H. You just take the X plus H, stick it into the function, it spits out a Y value. So now we have two points to calculate slope. We're looking for the slope of tangent of, or of the secant at AB. We have our x1, y1, our x2, y2. Here's our slope formula, which is rise over run. So we just subtract our, our y1 from our y2, and then our x1, our, pardon me, our x2 minus our x1 ends up just being h. Then what we did to approximate the slope of the tangent line is we moved our a closer and closer and closer to b, which basically takes h closer and closer to zero. And what that does is that gives us this limit notation for the slope, which is as h approaches zero of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. That's the slope of our tangent line. One last thing. This little piece right here can be called the difference quotient. So if you see questions in our book or on the homework or on a test or on a quiz that reference the difference quotient, what we're talking about is this little equation here where we're talking about the, the slope of secant AB um, in this notation. Okay? okay, let's do a practical problem using what we just did on that last board. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to find the slope at a point. This is the slope of a tangent line at that point. So here's our function basic quadratic function, nothing special about this. This is just f of x equals x squared. We're trying to find the slope of a line tangent to the point at negative 2, 4. Just as a review, here's our function, basic parabola, vertex on the origin. Here's our point, negative 2, 4. We're looking for the slope of that tangent line. So first off, you could tell it's negative, right? We have a decreasing function, so the slope of the tangent line should be negative. So when we're done with this, if we end up with a positive number, we know we're not correct. Okay, so let's take a look. As a review, here's from our last board the slope formula for a secant line. It's f of x plus h minus f of x over h. Okay, so check this out. Let's do our plug-in. We know we're at the point negative 2, 4. So the slope of the secant is going to equal f of negative 2 plus h minus f of negative 2 over h. Okay? So I just did my plug-in. I plugged in my x value where x shows up in here. Now I have to do the math on that. This is f of negative 2 plus h. So we're going to take this term, throw it into our function. So let's do that. This is going to be negative 2 plus h squared. So we're going to get, um, we're going to foil this. Let's just do it out minus 2 plus h times minus 2 plus h. That's what that is. We just plug that into our function. 
and this is going to be minus negative 2 squared, okay? And then all over h. So the bottom of the fraction just stays pretty simple for a little while. So let's take it down one more line. m secant is going to equal. Now I could FOIL this, and I'm going to get 4, that's first, outside is minus 2h, inside is also minus 2h, and last is h squared. And then bring over our last term. So this is negative 2 squared is 4, but we're subtracting. So this is minus 4, all over h. Now this gives you a feel for the algebra that we have to do to evaluate these. This is a really simple function, but already it's starting to look a little bit complicated. If you stick with it and work on it hard, you'll be able to cancel the right terms so you can ultimately evaluate your limit. Okay, so let's simplify. I have a 4 and a minus 4. Those go away. So I wind up with minus 4h plus h squared over h. Now, thinking ahead, to find the slope of this tangent line, we're going to have to be able to evaluate the function when x is 0, or I'm sorry, when h is 0. That's our bottom. So right now, we can't do that. If we plug h in, we're going to have a divide by 0 problem. So we still need to do some work to get to the right place. Fortunately, it's not so bad. So check this out. Slope of the secant. Now on the top, I can factor an h out of both those terms and get h times minus 4 plus h. I just took an h out of both those terms, all over h. Now I can cancel, and I have my slope is h minus 4. Okay? I just switched the order of those. So let's finish. The slope of the secant line is the limit as h approaches 0 of this, h minus 4. Now I can use direct substitution to evaluate this limit. If h is 0, then my limit is just going to be negative 4. And there we go. And guess what? It's got a negative slope. Remember in the beginning we talked about it had to have a negative slope. So we're there. We got our negative slope. So there you go. That's a practical problem using a simple quadratic function to find the slope of the tangent line. And again, this algebra is super important. It's nitpicky. There's a lot of steps. And this is a simple function. They get harder. So just be really careful with your record keeping. And remember that what you're shooting for is a final product where you can cancel out that bottom h so you can evaluate the limit. In that last board, what we did is we found the slope of the tangent line at a point, which was useful. Now we're going to derive a formula for finding the slope of a tangent line at any point on a function. This is a more general case, but then it gives you a formula that's more useful, because once you have that, then you don't need to go through the limit process every time to find a new slope. Okay, so, and as you recall, finding this formula for a slope at any point relates to taking the derivative, so I'm just reminding you of that there. Okay, here's our function, f of x equals x squared plus 1. Here's our secant slope formula, it's just f of x plus h minus f of x over h. So what we're going to do is we're going to plug this, this stuff into this function. So watch. m secant is going to equal, there's our big fraction bar, I'm going to do a square bracket. We're doing x plus h here, in for x, so that's going to be x plus h squared, and then I have my plus 1 out there. So this is f of x plus h plugged into that function. Now I need to subtract my f of x, which is just x squared plus 1. Remember, you've got to parentheses this because we're subtracting all of f of x. So if you left the parentheses out, this would stay as a positive 1 and it would create problems for you later. Okay. Now I'm going to get going on the algebra. This is where the record keeping is picky. You've got to remember all your terms. Otherwise, when you get to the canceling step, it might not work right. Okay, x plus h squared. That's going to give us x squared plus 2xh plus 1 um, plus h squared. 
So that's squaring that, and then I have my one, plus one there, and then this, we don't do any operations on it other than distribute the negative, so this is minus x squared minus one, all over h. Now we can start to combine like terms, cancel terms, do all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to start a new line here, m secant equals. Now, what I recommend you do is you look at this line up here and, and cross off stuff first. So I have an x squared minus x squared. They went away. I have a plus one and a minus one. They also go away. So now it got super simple. I'm going to rewrite this as x squared first because that's usually how we write um, our, our polynomials, plus 2xh all over h. Now I'm at that step where I need to cancel. And so I've got an h in both of these. So I can just cancel it out. Ping, ping, ping. This be, actually, here's what we cancel here. We don't cancel the h, we cancel the squared. So this is going to give me h plus 2x. Pretty cool. I mean, we started off with something that was complex. There's an H there. Got even more complex. Start to simplify. Holy moly, that's super simple. Okay? So now let's talk about the limit. Remember, our goal here is to find the slope of the tangent line when H is zero. Okay? So we take the limit as H goes to zero of H plus 2x. Now we can employ direct substitution. When h is 0, I could put 0 in for here, and it's not a problem. So this is just 2x. So to summarize, we started with a general case where I didn't give you a point to find the slope at. I just said, in general, here's our function. Let's derive a formula for the slope of a tangent line. So we kept our x in there. We didn't have a number. We brought it all the way through. Then we wound up with that formula, Okay, 2x. OK, how do we use that? How do we use our 2x formula? So what we can do is we can use that formula to find the slope of a line tangent to any point. So what about the point 2, 5? Okay. So what is the slope at this point? So all I do, super simple, take my x-coordinate, plug it into my formula. That's 2 times 2. Pretty quick, right? So at the point 2, 5, if I want the slope of the tangent line at that point, I just plug in my x-coordinate into my little formula, and bam, there's the slope at 2, 5. Now that you've watched the video, take a moment to jot down extra notes or jot down some questions for our next class. You can also re-watch portions of the video that you didn't get the first time. If you enjoyed the video, please click like, and if you'd like to help me grow my YouTube channel, please click subscribe.